October regular meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School Board District. Uh, having a quorum, I call this meeting to order. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, adjustments to the agenda um, and setting some times for them. Um, Jenny, we see a lot of you. You distributed the September minutes and the October first minutes, and yeah. I thought we had done. I thought we had done all these minutes. The others are all approved. Uh, because Christy didn't have the minutes when the agenda went out, she kept it on there. But those all all the way through August is approved. Okay, then I would uh, I, I would adjust the agenda to remove uh, items four point one from four point five from the consent agenda and add an item for uh, four point eight. Approve the minutes of something October first. I don't have enough screens open to remember. Jenny, what's the date of those minutes you included? Um, let's see, that would be Thursday, Thursday, October 1st. Correct. Yes. Okay. So we're going to add a 4.8, approve the minutes of Thursday, October 1st. Um, I think probably the whole consent agenda can be five minutes. Oh, and Ethan, are you going to do your, your usual role of, of keeping me on, on, on point? Do you mind, sir? I can do it if you'd like. I don't know. Ethan's not responding. I'm out of practice with uh, Google. So <laughs> I'm getting off this. Um, yes, actually, if you could do it, Amy, tonight, that'd be great. Sure. I've got my phone right next to me, and I'll do the timer. <laughs> Thank you. Five minutes for the consent agenda, I think you said. Yep, five minutes for the consent agenda. Okay. In the consent agenda is for five minutes. Uh, board comment, unless anyone's got a lot they want to say, I was thinking that would also be five minutes. Hey, Carl. This yeah. Is Me Megan speaking. Um, I just wanted to see if we could add to the agenda just a short discussion on um, some Stockbridge residents have been reaching out about hosting some kind of zoom or google meet to introduce the candidates running for um the seat in november um let's talk about that in board comment and let's let's make board comments then be 10 minutes okay um report, reports to the board jamie how long do you want I think we could all, I mean, the principals can correct me, but I think all that could be done in 10 minutes. Uh, same with uh, business manager. Are you part of that 10 yeah. minutes? I'm part of that 10 minutes, Carl. Okay. Uh, so let's make it be a total of 15 because we've got policies that uh, people have various opinions on. And by people, I mean me. Um, discussion items. Uh, so how much time is that? Are we at now, Amy? You are at, uh, 10, 20, 30 minutes, half hour. A half hour. So, um, let's see. If you this improvement plan, all uh, data report, 7.2, 7.3 and seven. I, well, I know that I would think we should probably spend at least five to 10 minutes talking about the board survey because that is awesome. Uh, if you've not seen what Jenny did, that's that, that there, there's some there's some nuggets of good information right there that we need to be talking about. So I think okay. that five or ten minutes. I don't know how much uh, the administration wants for seven two, seven three, and seven four. Uh, seven two should take about three to five. The academic report I think should take around five to ten. The budget should take ten. Okay, I would like us to uh, have an executive session, have the move the number 11 executive session around uh, 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 confidential attorney conversations, uh, although we could say uh, confidential conversations around uh, real estate. I would like to put that ahead of the public conversation so that anything that uh, uh, rolls out of that can then we can, we can report out and discuss in public. And can we talk about in that whether we need to be an executive session? Yeah, we can talk about it in an executive session. And then we can come out and say, 
uh, make our final decision about how we go forward because I, I would highly recommend we not don't use executive session anymore for high school discussions. I, I, I understand that, but there's a, 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 I think there's some things we need to, we, we should be clarifying around that in executive yes. session. We can come out and report on Great. that. I think, executive that session, I think you're absolutely right. Good. Thank you. I, I think the executive session should be more in the five to 10 minutes and the public conversation should be more in the 15 to 20. Oh. I think that it should not be a, an executive session where we talk and talk and talk and we come out and give two sentences. No. But I think there's some things that we should probably go over before we get to that. So we're going to have uh, as uh, 7.45 uh, executive session around uh, 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 confidential uh, communications around uh, real estate and contracts. The building conversation at seven at uh, and that the executive session is five to ten. The building is fifteen to twenty. The uh, superintendent evaluation committee tool. I mean, five, that's not going to take long at all. That's five minutes. Ethan. Yeah. Yeah, five minutes. Okay, and out, outdoor education. And don't um, tell me, don't tell me that takes five minutes. We we get we only get started at ten to fifteen. Um. They give it ten. I, okay. I think I've got a pretty clear vision of what I want to get done in that. So. Okay. Um, our uh, 8.1 action items, the continuous improvement plan. I'm you assuming can take care of that with 7.2. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, new hires. None. Okay. And uh, then we have public comment at 10 and then we will take the executive session for a person. We will, we will repurpose 11 into a second executive session for personnel matters. Great. Thank you. And then uh, we will come out, take any other actions we may require and uh, adjourn. That work for all of us? Yes, thank you, Carl. No worries. Um, <laughs> could you tell that I've been running a lot more, a lot more Google Meets, uh, especially with high school kids, where it's like agenda, ideas, organization, focus. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, number five, board comment. Uh, the first thing I, I want to do is to formally welcome and wave wave uh, there, Keith. Keith Spilecki, uh, this is his first regular meeting. He is the uh, interim replacement uh, board member, replacing uh, uh, Jane, Janie, um, whose name? What, Feinberg. Feinberg. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is like prompting me from offside. Feinberg. Um, uh, Keith and I, Keith has been uh, officially sworn in by the Stockbridge Town Clerk. Uh, Keith and I had a, uh, had a fine conversation today. He's looking forward to, to being here, as he put it, like a fly on the wall. Anything else, Keith? Thank you. It's good to good be here. Thank you, Keith. It's great to have you. Good to have you here. Okay, Megan. Um, what we were told. Did you guys skip over four? I'm sorry, Carl. Yes, he did. Those minutes. Oh, I did skip over four. I went right into board comment. <laughs> I was so organized. I was so good for like three minutes. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to circle right back. We're, we're going to circle right back. And I would entertain a motion to approve uh, uh, the consent agenda. Do you want to do that as a slate, or do people have individual comments about the two, the two minutes from nine one and the one set of minutes from ten one? No, slate is fine. They all good. Three, it's three that we're approving. It's a special meeting on the first, the regular meeting on the first, and then a special meeting on October first. Correct. I make a motion to approve uh, those minutes. Do I hear a second? Second. second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented for Tuesday, October 1st, or September 1st regular, Tuesday, September 1st special, and uh, uh, Thursday, October 1st special. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The consent agenda is the, the 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 consent agenda slate is approved by by unanimous voice vote. Now going back to, to, to board comment, I was just eager to welcome Keith. That's what it was. <laughs> All right, we're one minute in. There you go. Circling back to uh, to, to to Megan, remember we asked about um, when we were trying to figure out if our booklet should include information 
for um, uh, like candidate bios or candidate uh, position statements or get to know the candidate ideas. And Dina said that no, it was um, an independent thing. I think that the board should support that or and suggest that maybe if that was something Orca could organize or okay. or the Herald. What's that? Or the Herald. Yeah, or the Herald, exactly. I just you, I, I got a fairly clear message from, from, from Dina that we weren't supposed to we were we weren't supposed to be putting, you know, that information out as you know, as the municipal body. I think okay. that I would certainly attend a forum like that and and I would, you know, participate as like an informed witness or whatever, or an expert witness if necessary. But I, I, I think it's not the board's place to sponsor that, Megan. Uh, Jamie, you have any thoughts on that? No, that's my that's my thought as well. Okay, um, I may um, direct a few people that are have been vocal on Stockbridge Connections um, to just inquire through email to both you, Carl, and um, you, Jamie, as well about That'd that. Be great. Yeah, okay. that that would be great. I. You know, I think that as the board chair, I have stayed, I stay away. I've, I don't ever go to Stockbridge Connections, actually, because I don't think, you know, I, I think that if I start engaging in that forum, then I have to start engaging in front post forum, and then I have to start monitoring the Mountain Times message boards and so yeah. on and so forth. I think that we, you know, absent of an official, you know, channel, that I, I, I try to stay away and tell people to email me and when... Someone says something, and I know Julie's told people in, in private message on Stockbridge Connections, email Carl at his, his school board address. So I think, yeah, that is certainly appropriate to put that message out there. And I think, you know, tag teaming me and Jamie so that we can give the board response and the administration response is, 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 is fine. And when we do that, we'll CC the board back so you all are in the loop as to what we're saying, and we can all stay on, on message. I'm emailing Martha Slater as we speak to suggest that she, they, the Herald perhaps get on this. And see yeah, that's a really good idea. Okay, I'll definitely do that, Carl. Um, we also should also take roll call of everyone that's um, listed if, before we get too far. Oh, man. Excellent. <laughs> I just wanted to thank remember. You, thank you for, yes, thank you for, for, for covering me that. So um, to participate, I mean, you are certainly well to listen to this meeting, to participate in this meeting. You need to be a, a, a resident of Stockbridge or Rochester, and all we have are phone numbers. And so to keep track of who's, who might want the public comment, we're going to need to uh, ask you to uh, unmute and identify yourself. I'm going to go through and I'm going to identify you by your area code and the last two numbers of your phone call. And if you can just unmute, say your name, and whether you're a Stockbridge or a Rochester resident, that'd be great. So... 802 or 80202. And Carla, if folks don't do that, just so folks know with the open meeting laws, you only have to announce your names in this venue if you actually participate through public comment. Okay, so we can collect all that. Then, then we'll take. I'll take the board roll call, the administration roll call, and if people comment, we'll have. We'll make them say who they are. That seems a lot less cumbersome, Jamie. Thank you. Um, so I'm Carl Grappi. Uh, Amy, I see you here. Amy Welt. Bonnie. I'll go. Ethan Bowen, uh, board member for Rochester. Jenny Austin, board member, Stockbridge. Megan Payne, Rochester. Keith Spilecki, Stockbridge. Okay. What are you waiting for? Wendy Stetson, co principal, our son. Bonnie Warren, co principal, our son. Uh, I did not say that I am a, I'm the board chair from Stockbridge, but I am. I am just a board member for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the love, Amy. That's awesome. Um, okay. We also, apparently, we have Tara, the business manager, on the call. Yes, I am here. I'm here. Okay, and we have Ray Blue, the... Uh, 
uh, uh, our, or uh, WRVSU uh, IT Jack of all trades. Yes, Carl, thank you. Okay, we've now taken attendance. Um, we've had, do we have any other board comment? Yeah, I'd like to um, really compliment our administration on the job that they have done getting the school up and running. And, um, you know, of course, I see the Rochester um, drop off and pick up and uh, it is it is slick and it is smooth and it is efficient. And I, I just thank you for all the hard work you guys have done uh, to get this up and running in such a wonderful, wonderful way. It really is incredible. Um, and I also wanted to, uh, I saw that there was a videos that were um, posted, I, I'm not sure where, uh, of, that one of our, uh, or some of our teachers or somebody created about wearing masks and, and it really was quite fun and inventive and really cute. Um, so it really, it really put a smile on my face and I was very proud of our school for, for that. So thank you. Amen. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, was amazing it, job. Was it made video or a teacher made video? Teacher. Yeah, the a bunch of teachers got together and made some welcome back videos. Is there a way that I could see those? I mean, are they are they public? Join Facebook. Yeah. Okay. I because I, I I think that I, I think that's awesome, and I think that yeah. sharing around what our what our teachers are doing as much as we can is, is important. We can email, have them emailed to you too, Carl, if that's easier than social media. Yeah. It's easier than social media for you, Grandpa. <laughs> well, personally, it's nice. Yeah, to no, you said, you said you an email, that's fine, because that'll remind me to look at them, as opposed to I'll, I'll forget to look at Facebook. Uh, do we have any other board comments? Okay, board reports. Jamie, you're first. Uh, you have my report in hand. Um, I'll add that uh, we do have some exciting news that I'll let the principal share in regards to the grant uh, from Efficiency Vermont. So we're excited about that as we continue to work to improve our HVAC systems. Um, I'll also uh, let folks know um, that we're in the thick of the budget season. Uh, and you're going to see your first draft tonight. I know it's going to look a bit different, and I'll, I can provide some perspective to that um, in that, you know, what we're looking to get back from you guys in regards to feedback on the first draft of the student support budget. That will continue to be brought forward as we move uh, month to month. Uh, next month, you'll get a much more comprehensive picture because it'll be student support and the rest of your instructional staff that teach university of all students. Um, just to provide that context. Um, and then also there was information that went out from me today um, in regards to some changes to our school day. Uh, we are extending the school day to three o'clock. It's been going to three o'clock, just from 1.30 to three was enrichment. Um, that doesn't mean schools can't continue to have the 1.30 to three block look very similar to what it already was. Um, there were certain schools throughout the SU that we were having some staffing challenges from 1.30 to 3. I also emphasize to folks that if leaving at 1.30 is still their desire, that they should meet with their principal and talk about an alternative pathway um, that would allow for that to happen. We can still continue to reinforce skills, academic skills from 1.30 to 3, even if students weren't in the building. Um, so I'm looking to at, I think that there is still opportunities here within COVID of increasing the course outdoor learning, increasing experiential learning, um, and then also increasing how we actually look at the school day around um, alternative pathways. Um, and so I'm looking to continue to um, emphasize that just because a school day goes to three doesn't mean it needs to go to three for everyone. And it, sh it really didn't need to the last several years once Act 77 took hold. Um, and you know that that's one of our SU goals is personalized learning and proficiency-based learning. And so I'm looking at how do we continue to um, see opportunities in the face of a global pandemic um, to maybe create some change quicker than we typically would have been able to. As you know, education sometimes does move a bit slow, but uh, 
I do feel like this is something that we need to we need to pick up on because we were a little bit behind the eight ball in in regards to proficiency based learning and personalized learning. Um, and then I just got a compliment too, uh, and then I'll, I'll entertain any questions. Uh, Lindy has been doing a terrific job um, steering the virtual learning academy. Um, you know, many hands make light work, but she's really been my point person, um, and. Uh, She's doing a terrific job. And um, I was in both of your schools um, over the past week. They feel great. Uh, I saw a really great poetry unit in sixth grade at Rochester yesterday morning. And I got to see some of your students um, share poetry and uh, really talk about the why to the writing uh, piece. And uh, the buildings feel awesome. So you should be very proud. I'll take any questions folks have. Jamie, you have questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if uh, this is sort of uh, piggybacking on what I'm going to talk about in the uh, outdoor learning. We have a lot of teachers and possibly some administrators who have experience with outdoor learning, uh, outdoor teaching um, um, in the whole SU. And as this is a goal in the whole SU, could there be a guide to those teachers? and what grades or what areas they're in that could go to other teachers who are looking for advice and ideas? Yeah, that is something we've been talking about at the SU level, um, Ethan, about, you know, we've got experts in literacy. We're trying to build experts in math. How do we build experts in outdoor education? Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, we're creating these teacher leaders throughout the SU who are then leading our professional development. Exactly. Um, and I think there's a lot of sustainability in that model there's also a lot of empowerment in that model. So that is some of the work that we're looking to do as we navigate our professional development plan, both as we move forward in the spring, but for the next three to five years. Something that I've said to Mary Ellen is, you're gonna see soon a well-articulated professional development plan. So you know exactly when pieces of the professional development are being provided throughout the SU over the next three to five years. And so that that you you have a sense of who is expert at this point. We've been identifying them, yes. Um, and you know, you're right. There are there's quite a few experts, and that's one of the power. You know, the powerful things I think about having eight schools across the SU is we have a lot of staff, and so we do have a lot of expertise when we look across there when we think about that collective genius. And so we have pockets of folks that are really strong in this particular area. I guess the, the idea of the guide for me would be that an individual teacher could reach out to another individual teacher at the same grade level um, at another school on their own and not necessarily have to wait for the in-service on it or something like that. That's why I, I would hope a guide might be put together that could be usable in that particular area. You know, absolutely right. Identifying who are those teacher leaders. Mm, and, and let the other teachers know. Yep. I'd like to add to that um, really quickly. I think um, just talking with your administrators, they very well know probably in every building across the SU who those best teachers are to be part of maybe an outdoor education team that could really work across the entire SU to bring, you know, I think what every school wants to have is more outdoor education. So I, I think a great place is to start with the administrators. Thanks, Jamie. You're doing a great job. I also think uh, to, to throw in my two cents that, you know, finding, you know, we did, we did some work uh, under previous superintendents where, you know, grants were found to take kind of tiger teams of, of, of leaders out and get specialized education. If we could, if, if we could maybe get some grant funding or, or find some ways to send some of our already existing teacher leaders out to, to a conference to uh, you know, to, to to get some specific training that they can bring back. In the past, at least, it's found that you know training teacher leaders is is far more affordable for the SU, um, and then having them pass their their knowledge out to their teams, um, you know, is, is, it can can be successful without the cost of saying we're sending every teacher to uh, you know <laughs> uh, outdoor boot camp. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement with the approach. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Jamie? 
Okay, uh, Bonnie and Lindy, tell us what you got to tell us. So I think the addition into the principal's report um, is that we heard back from Efficiency Vermont. It, I know we threw out some pretty big numbers about what it was going to cost to update the HVAC systems in both buildings. And in Rochester, all projects in that amount were fully funded with the grant. So we'll be reimbursed. So everything's covered and we're all up to code, which is really exciting around that. Bonnie, do you want to explain yours in Rochester? Linda, you said all in Rochester. Yeah, I did mean Stockbridge. Thank you. I thought so. So the, uh, we had two projects in Rochester, one being the preschool classroom, one being the gym. Uh, the, the gymnasium was the one that was funded. Um, that's in the amount of $31,000 and change. Um, the preschool one was not funded for the very simple fact that the, um, uh, the grant actually speaks in fine print to the projects have to be ones that can benefit the entire school. And our preschool is just uh, one classroom. Uh, that was less expensive. It's around $12,000. We are going to find funding to go forward with that because we do need to get fresh air into all parts of our building. Um, the good news about the gym project and the projects in Stockbridge is that they have to be completed by December 29th to qualify for funding. So they will be done pretty expeditiously, pretty quickly. Um, and we'll have, uh, we'll have those sections of our building uh, upgraded. So we were, uh, we were really happy to get that news. And just so folks know, the funding for the pre-K is how I will go after other uh, CARES related funds to cover that cost is the plan. The only other thing I will say in the principal's report, a mistake on my fault. If you see under the uh, the second bullet, under the first goal, I left in the preschool in cutting and pasting this. I should have taken that out because that was in the uh, the September <laughs> principal's report. Um, so that so, was the so you were talking about the um, the uh, funding from Efficiency Vermont has. The, the other parts of updating our HVAC system been covered as well by, by fund, by, okay, thank you. As far as getting the work done by December 29th, do we, I would imagine every, every contractor is busy during Thanksgiving break and, and, and Christmas break. Do we have a plan in place for how we're going to coordinate getting that work done in those two buildings so it's 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 done by then are we going to try to have all the kids spend one week in rochester um while they're working in stockbridge and vice versa the next week or the work in stockbridge is already completed oh sweet and the work in rochester is primarily outside on the gym roof carl and we're not using the gym now so we don't believe that will have much of an impact we may very well have to move the preschool classroom into the gym for them to do the preschool, but it's a little early yet. We don't know quite for sure how we're going to make that handle. The engineer who spec these projects, um, he's still very confident that he can meet this deadline. Um, he had already made contacts with manufacturers, et cetera, to see about the availability of equipment. And I spoke with him again uh, this morning, and he was continuing to follow up on that and should be back in touch very shortly, he told me. Excellent. Excellent. I just, you know, they say they can get the work done. Well, we get the work done if you just be out of the school for the month of December. I, I don't think it's going to have that kind of impact. Excellent. Excellent. Good, good, good. I'm so glad to hear you're on top of that. And I'm so glad we're getting that sweet, sweet free money. <laughs> Does anyone else have questions for the principals? All right, then that, that, that means it's you, Tara. Excellent, thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I sent my report earlier today, so I'm sure you probably haven't had a lot of time to digest it, so I'll go over it briefly for you. Um, FY19 audits are officially done for everybody in the supervisory union. We have wrapped up fiscal year end reconciliation for FY20 and started FY20 audits this week. So yesterday, the majority of today, I have spent my time with our auditors getting stuff prepared and with my team reviewing the additional information that's needed. So that is well underway. 
I shared in my report um, all of the reports that are due out of the business office um, in the month of October so that you all had some awareness of some of the items that we were working on. And I'll try to continue to do that throughout the year so that you're aware of, of what's happening in the business world. Um, our FY20 stat books have all been submitted. So now uh, the Agency of Education does their thing with the data. And then if they find any corrections or any questions, then they come back to us and then we have to do edits. So we are- Can you, sorry, there, hi, Ethan, just could you confirm what a stat book is, please? The stat books are what I have to report up to the Agency of Education for every one of our entities at the close of the fiscal year. And it goes over all of the expenditures and revenues that we've received. And particularly um, the biggest chunk of it is when we pay tuition or we receive tuition, we have to identify that um, based on each supervisory union that we either pay or receive tuition for. And then they match those numbers up. And then that is how they determine the allowable versus the announced tuition rates that we can then you know, bill back or have to credit back sending or receiving districts for. Thank you. You're welcome. We sent in um, a revised FY20 special education expenditure report. Um, when we were closing out uh, FY20 through the reconciliation process, we found about 70, just short of $71,000 that we needed to include in that special education report. So that's been resubmitted and waiting for approval from the Agency of Education. And the school food authority world, uh, we started um, the verification process has to get started on October 1st, which is where families get contacted to verify their income for their free and reduced application statuses. We also have to start doing our in-person observations of all of our programs. So that's the breakfast, lunch, and after-school snack programs if they're running. Um, we have to do those twice a year, the site reviews. As far as CARES funding is concerned, um, we submitted our CRF application. I made one small amendment to it, and I'm hoping to get some further information on Friday when we have our meeting the Business Managers Association has their meeting with the Agency of Education, so I'm hoping for some updates on timelines and how long it's going to take them to review and approve those. Efficiency Vermont, Bonnie and Lindy shared that um, Rochester and Stockbridge have now been submitted, so I did outline for you all what was approved for each of our entities within the supervisory union, so that's in my report. And that was a big project. I mean, the facilities and the administration and working with Charlie out of Vermont and all of our suppliers and our vendors who are involved. I mean, th this grant was done based on a proposal submission, which allowed us to not have to go through the bid process um, because it was the state of an emergency. So there's a lot of work that went into this and a lot of time. So I'm very proud and congratulate all of our team for the great work they did to get us those funds. Thank you. I just wanted to share, just so you all are aware, um, those who are at the executive board meeting last week also heard this. When we have students that go to alternative programs, they don't have the same deadline that public schools do. As you recall, we had to set your tuition rate back in January for what you were going to charge students who wanted to tuition into Rochester or Stockbridge. So these alternative programs don't need to do that, and they just had to file their tuition rates. So we've got some pretty substantial increases, primarily in special education, which, as you are aware, you get an assessment out. So there may, when we're doing our budget cycle, we have to look at all of that. So we do believe with some of the other changes that we've made in special education that we're going to be good, but I just wanted to bring that all to your attention. Grant updates, we have um, submitted our original, our amendment one and amendment two for our grants and they have all been approved. So that's great news. And then just the, the discussion items to bring up, um, the full board and executive board need to determine how we're going to handle announced versus allowable tuition. They have to make a decision if we are going to do bill backs and credit backs when the time comes. And if we do it for one district, we have to do it for all districts. So that's on there. Um, we need to nail down our process for tuition that we don't have confirmed residency verifications on. So that's something that we'll be continuing to work through. 
uh, board stipends will be paid out at the end of this month. I am going to be marketing all of our ancillary benefits, which is life insurance, long-term disability um, with Gallagher Bassett. So we'll hopefully get some revised numbers and some rates on that. And then the last item for discussion, we had previously had a presentation from Encore Renewable Energy on some solar net metering options for you all. We have now also been approached by two additional solar vendors who are interested in providing a proposal for you. So the executive board Monday night, last Monday night, authorized us to move forward with that. And Ray is going to help me with that project because I am not up to speed on what all the differences are and what all of it means. So Ray is going to help me keep that organized and keep us on track as we get those proposals in so that we can present that to all of you as options if you're interested in doing anything additional with them. And then I sent you your um, September expenditure reports. So if you're looking at that and you have any questions, you can let me know. But otherwise, that's my report. Tara? Do you expect yep. that, that you will have the solar proposals in hand in time for the budget cycle? So we'd, it'd be revenue we'd be locking in for the 21-22 uh, uh, year? I don't know how fast that can go into effect because I know we can lock in on the agreements, and this is where I'm not – 100% up to speed, Carl. I know we can lock into the agreement with Encore that yes, we're going to buy into the project, but I don't know when we actually start to realize the savings on the bill because they have to build the array still. So I don't know how it will work with the other companies. So that'll be something I'll have to say stay tuned for, unless Ray has any input he can provide right off the bat. <laughs> no, I think you said it right. You know, they solicit customers up front and then build the array and literally the day when it's done, the credits will show up the next month, that kind of thing. I okay, so, so then we would be prudent not to be building in any kind of revenue expectations into our 21-22 budget. Correct. Excellent, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions uh, for, for Tara? No. Sarah, how is the new um, assistant budget or business manager? Is that the title? Oh, thank you, Ethan. So, yes, I totally forgot. Um, my new associate business manager started last Wednesday. So he has, his name is Jason Rogers, and he came from us to us from Ascomba Savings Bank, where he was the branch manager in Bethel. So he's been with us now for four days. He went out on Friday with um, Jamie, myself, Don McMahon, and Mary Ellen to meet with our administrators. So he is part of this budget cycle process. So he sat down and got to meet everybody and started to hear the conversations around how we're gonna build the budgets. So, so far so good. Okay, thank you. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. Any other questions for Tara? No. Uh, oh. Just to let you know, Carl, we are six minutes over um, on okay. our minute time for this slot. Okay. Um, we have three policies that we're supposed to be considering. We're going to take them in reverse order. Um, just so you know, these, Carl, just so you know, this was to get comments. These are going to come to the full board in October. This was just, I'm trying to get boards to give comments now so we can revise. So you don't have to take any action on these. These are not for action. Okay. Um, the comments, I'm very interested in Ethan's opinion around uh, uh, the policy F F30 budgeting because it speaks to um, the composition of the board booklet, and that is Ethan's baby. Have you looked at that part, Ethan? Um, uh, quickly this afternoon, but not, um, not with the book in front of me, sort of checklisting it. Okay. Uh, how soon, Jamie, you, are you going to be asking the full board to approve these next meeting? They'll come forward in October. Yeah, they came forward to the executive board in September, and they were good with these three. So if you're looking to have any type of revision, please get those to Mary Ellen sooner rather than later, those comments, okay. because she'll bring them to the policy committee in October. And this would be the second time the 
SU board will have seen these, so I was going to be looking to try to adopt them at that level in October. Okay, thank you. I will. I will. Uh, and thank you, Carl, for the because I thought about that as I was looking at them, like, oh, this is in, this is stuff I was looking at. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I heard that. I heard that said, That's Ethan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me, I, I, let me. My opinion is his opinion. <laughs> I will um, download this right now and take a look at this. The, the the records retention policy is one of those lawyer policies. It's really hard for the board to evaluate because basically what it says is, you know, that we're, we're going to command all the employees to follow these laws about record retention um, without really clarifying what those are. So it would be nice to see the supporting document that says we're keeping you know, these were, you know, these records for this period, you know, the current law, and I understand the referencing the law because laws change, but, you know, having an understanding of what those, 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 those laws and policies are and how, because we're basically saying employees do this. And if you don't follow these laws, you're in trouble. So understanding how the, you know, how we're educating the employees around them, what they are and what that, what those procedures might look like. I know as a board, we don't decide procedures, but, you know, understanding more beyond just the, the policy that says we're following the law would be good for us to know, Jamie. Um, could we instruct our, our, our lawyers to break down these um, laws into something more usable? Or is that somebody in the business office do that? I just, I agree with Carl. It, it, it's, it's not very usable right now. And if you're asking people to follow something, you want to make it usable. So Ray, Ray and I can speak to this, um, and Ray's raised his hand, so I'm going to let him take the lead. Okay. So um, these are updates of um, records retention schedules from the state that go back as far as the 80s. It's not so much that the board is asking us to do something. This, this is what the state is telling us to do. So the policy is the first page of a 10 page document. The other nine pages are the actual record schedules. I believe that's what Carl's asking about. But we did not think that that was, should go in as part of the policy itself. And you are correct. Oh, I am unmuted. And you are correct, sir. That is uh, that is uh, always uh, been been the biggest thing that I've when I've gone to, to, to VSBA trainings is yeah, you know, boards do not do procedure, they do policy. But just you know, seeing seeing the uh, you know seeing how the procedure is going to be implemented, it can often be helpful for un for understanding if the 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 administration the SU has the appropriate tools to do what needs to to to, to do what needs to happen. Because sometimes we go, yeah, we're going to follow all these rules, and then you know we find out that we missed the part where some of the paras couldn't have they changed the rule where. They had to be over 50% of special ed eligible kids in a particular para instruction for that para time to qualify for Fed reimbursement and not 50-50. So that 4-4 kid should have been 4-5, and now we lose money. So, I mean, I, I think it's, it's just more of the board wanting to, I think, see that, that the administration has digested the laws and put together something that, you know, our people can, can, can work with. That's all. Oh. Yep, um, I can forward anyone who's interested or to everyone um, the full model from the state, which includes those. Okay, if you can send it to me at least, because I'm supposed to be our policy guy. Sure. I, I, I need something else to help me get to sleep at night. Um, the last policy, and this is the one that I have the most problems with, is, you know, policy governance um, has been a thing that's gone forward and back in Vermont a lot over the course of years. And this seems to be really, I mean, I, you, you don't mention ends. You don't use, you don't use all the policy governance gar jargon in the policy, but it really does seem to be a, a, a heavy move towards moving towards a policy governance model. Um, can you speak to, to, to where that's coming from, Jamie? You know, I, I, I actually would say that this is not a policy governance model. This is actually just stating what's actually in statute right now. Okay. Um, 
And so everything that this speaks to is actually what's provided to the superintendent is in regards to authority via state statute. I mean, that changed a few years ago. They kept moving more and more responsibility into the SU office. Oh, yeah. As and you that- all know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this was an attempt to try to clarify, especially as we bring on new board members um, in regards to onboarding of, you know, example being in statute that really the the employee that works directly for the board's the superintendent and under statute, all other employees of the SU actually work for the superintendent. And so Correct. there's just some things that I was looking for this policy to better communicate for folks. I also think across the SU at times, there's a misunderstanding that, you know, I work for an individual board member potentially and not at the, you know, purview of the entire board. Yeah. So that's what this was an attempt to do is to better clarify some of that. Okay. Okay. I, I will, I will try to, 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 to read through it again and look at it in that light. And if I have any comments, I'll send them to you directly. The other thing that I liked about it is it does talk about um, superintendent evaluation, which is part of what the executive board brought up. Um, yep. So that tied in nicely in regards to ensuring that we have a tool um, that we're using on a regular basis to provide feedback. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any more questions about those policies? All right. We're going to move into uh, the discussion items, the board survey. Jenny, this is awesome. Yeah. I've been scanning it and it's amazing. I... Ray, I just sent you an email with a PDF. I was wondering if it was possible if you could bring it up and we can just scan through it real quickly. Yeah, you did a really, really great job with, with presenting it. It's really wonderful. Um, is this something that we, I mean, it's this seems like a, um, you know, that we really need to dive into to it yeah. and have, you know, discussion about it. Um, you yeah. know, we, I'd almost like to call a special meeting at another time for us to, to get together and, and really, you know, hash it out. I yeah, one, thing I, one thing I haven't um, kind of compiled is, all of the open-ended comments so I was going to um, you know I'm kind of figuring in the back of my head we'll kind of have you know also for the public as well kind of the the summary slides and then um, kind of a list of the open-ended but also kind of summarizing um, some of the open-ended I think the the easiest open-ended one would be about uh, I forget the exact wording but what sort of resources that the community is looking for in terms of, you know, a lot of the answers are pretty common, you know, arts, um, stuff like that. And those are pretty easy to summarize. Um, So I guess it's up on the screen and I know there's some people on the phone, so we can't, um, they won't be able to see it, but we're, um, this is kind of a draft. So there might be um, some things that we change and also the the open-ended. So I'll just do um, maybe a very, brief summary of each page here. Um, so overall, there is 104 responses, 44 from Stockbridge, 60 from Rochester. Um, one, which- one quick, I, I just wanted to, just a, a, a bookkeeping point. If you notice, if you hover over Jenny's presentation, you see a thing that looks like a tack. If you click that tack, that will make the presentation swell to fill your screen. Like, uh, middle-aged man eyes like me, that you might find that <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, okay. So I think actually that's pretty proportionate, I believe, to the populations within the two towns as well. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail. I know that I just sent this out to the board tonight so we can, and as Amy mentioned, you know, we may be able to get into this further, especially when we have the, the open ended comments um, kind of summarized. So this first page is kind of the generic questions. Um, as you can see, um, you know, most of the most of the respondents do not currently have um, an elementary school age child, for example. Um, can you go to the next the next slide, Ray? I'm not sure. I don't think that I can. Um, so, really, one of, one of the big questions: um, What's your preferred campus configuration? Um, so, as you can see, A is the highest, which would be Rochester and Stockbridge retaining separate school campuses. And another thing to point out, um, I think on every question, I know there was interest at some of our meetings at keeping 
um, you know, knowing what the answers were for the for each town. So you'll see that the blue um, the blue columns are the Rochester responses for all of these slides, and then the orange is Stockbridge. So you won't see exactly what the number is for Stockbridge, but you can, you know, big picture, you know, get an idea of, of what the patterns are. And then kind of at the bottom of the screen there, um, in terms of retaining separate elementary school campuses and sets of, of pretty big question, I think that we were looking at. I've also shown, there's a couple questions that, that I've shown as combined Rochester and Stockbridge. And so the, the graphic on the right is showing um, so the question was if Rochester and Stockbridge should retain separate elementary school campuses. So this shows um, slightly over 50%, so 53% either agreed or strongly agreed. So really the intent of the pie chart is, um, you know, whether you agree or you strongly agree, you know, it's kind of a gray area. So this kind of shows more succinctly um, as a combined district where people, where people heads are. You want to scroll down, Ray? Um, so I don't think we'll go into all of these in detail since we only have a few minutes to go over this, but um, so the question on the left, um, so should both attend, Rochester and Stockbridge students should both attend elementary school at the Rochester campus and the Stockbridge campus should be eliminated so you can um, you know overall the one and all these numbers where there's one through five one would be strongly disagree and five strongly agree um so there's a general that from the previous slide this also kind of carries through here that um kind of agreeing with in general the idea the idea of the separate campuses if you want to scroll down we won't go through all of them but i'll try and get to some of the highlights um, one that's kind of interesting that the Rochester and Stockbridge should split grades at their campuses. Um, I think there's pretty much a wide variety of, of answers there from both towns on that one. And then, um, you know, we're kind of moving forward with the, we are moving forward with the, the elementary building, but um, we kind of had in the, you know, in our, in our minds there, you know, getting people's ideas of what they do think about elementary versus high school. So this on the right there confirms that more people agree with keeping the elementary camp elementary building if they had to choose what building for the Rochester facility. Um, so this is what is your preference for usage of the Rochester campus? So really the um, the predominant for both towns is that the are said to pursue the, the option of the town taking over the high school building um, which is good since that's kind of you know where we're I think everyone's head is in this um, sort of scenario but we had this question out there to kind of see what people in the community are thinking this is really an incredible job Jenny it's a very very good job thank you yeah and then I, I I definitely think we we should uh, plan a meeting within within a short time to to really dig into this and talk about it in depth because you this is really really great job. Uh, so this is more kind of talking about the building in high school. Um, so the one on the left, our sh our side should keep the status quo of the Rochester building. So you can kind of see again, there's. Um, overall the numbers the total numbers are kind of split between the one three and five but you can also see the breakdown um of rochester versus stockbridge and kind of where each town where each town feels here and then the one about the option about whether folks agree or disagree about um the town pursuing the high school is a pretty um pretty high agree and strongly agree there on that one And then this is just more kind of details about um, 
if the town didn't take over, you know, if there's some other some other option for um, taking over the building and kind of what what folks' opinions are. The one on the left, pretty strong disagree there for um, the town taking over the elementary school building. You know, it's not something that we're looking at now, but still something that we're gauging town town input on. And it's kind of more, you know, talking about the buildings and what 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 folks would support in terms of other options. Um, so really, it looks like the towns, um, you know, varying levels of degree, degree for each town in terms of who they want to see take over the building. Um, total numbers are pretty much either either the town or supervisory union or some other entity. It seems like, um, you know, people people are in support of. And then, so this is sort of taking a look at what the high school building should be used for, um, whether or not they should be used for educational uses and special events are the main two ones. So um, I don't have the, the actual numbers. Overall, the support of using for educational uses and for special effects, um, it's definitely higher on from the Rochester side. Um, and then the, the Stockbridge is kind of the highest would be C used for special events. And then the other, um, you know, there's kind of some varying opinions on that one from the Stockbridge side. Um, so we'll get too much into these. These were just kind of questions about um, you know, where where folks would be looking at sending their their youngsters if if there wasn't an elementary school in your town. I find it very interesting that, um, and, and I think it speaks to perhaps the uh, uh, current climate in our communities, that no Stockbridgeian picked Rochester and no Rochester, no Rochester, I don't know, no Rochester resident picked uh, uh, Stockbridge. I think so. I think there was one or two. Now that you mention it, I'll have to look at that one. Maybe it didn't quite. Maybe the bar was low on there that it didn't show up. But yeah, that's a good point. And so this is, I think, another thing that um, you know, I think both towns that we all know that um, kind of supportive of an elementary school in in our own town. So this um, was to say, if if the, our said was to dissolve, whether. Um, I guess how important an elementary school would be in your town, and there's a pretty strong support from both um, from both towns on um, on that one here. Jenny, really good job. I, I guess my um, my concern is that there's so few parents that actually answered this from both rochester and stockbridge this is yeah yeah or even have any ties to a, you know students that have gone there i wonder if we've missed a, a pretty pertinent demographic as well yeah i didn't break it down there were some parents um that did reply but like you said there's not a big number so um yeah so i'm not sure how how actual hypothetical or how real that would be i guess would be the best way to explain it yeah, but thank you. I mean, really a great job, Jenny. And then we could come up with the time to uh, to meet uh, again to, to really go over this more in depth and to just kind of sit around the table and hash it out a little bit. I think yeah, I think that sounds good. Yeah, definitely. I think speaking to your point, Megan, I think one of the things that struck me, I agreed. I thought that, you know, I'm, I'm always like, we put together these sample, the, these surveys, we work so hard on them. We never get the, the, you know, the response that we hope to get. But what I, I, I really think, what I think is important is that I think you, you, we, we, you, you really distilled it down. We, we, we came with a good set of questions. You know, these, I believe these are, you know, the questions that kind of really summarize the conversation, which building, which place, how are they being used? So on and so forth. So I think that there's, 
you know, that, that in itself is, is, is good work because it can clarify questions that we can ask. We can ask people in town meetings or forums. Absolutely. I mean, I, the, I think the questions were really on point for what, what our communities are asking and wondering about. But it also illustrates the differences between the two communities and how difficult it is for the board to make this come together and work. You have two very, very diverse opinions about how the district should proceed. Yeah, there's even a, a pretty big split. Um, we don't have to go through it in detail, but in terms of supporting the merger um, combined between Rochester and Stockbridge, um, 38 agree or strongly agree in terms of supporting the merger, 26 is neutral and 36% as disagreeing or strongly disagreeing. So there's, you know, there's definitely a lot of various opinions out there on, on all of this. And I agree. And I was going to finish up by saying that's why this, the board needs to have a clear vision of how to bring that together to convince the undecided to go one way or the other. And I think you have to take this opportunity to listen to what the community is saying. So do we want to come up with a meeting time right now, like next week to, to get to talk about this survey some more? Um, you guys are welcome to meet next week. I'm totally booked in meetings already all next week. I open up the following. Yeah, I mean, it, we wouldn't really be sitting down and deciding anything. It's just really going through it and talking, talking it over with it, each other, you know, and really taking a look at it. Maybe we should just um, look, Thursday. take it to ourselves. What do you, do you want to have? Do you want to set a date? I, I, I think you're right. I think, and I hear Keith too. I think. We can't let this just slip by and, and not get to it. Right. October 15th is next Thursday. Yes. Anybody else? I can make that. 630. No I am pretty sure. I'm going to have to double check. 630 board survey? Yes. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, we won't, won't, wouldn't have any action. It's really just for for discussion, yeah. really, just round table discussion, like, okay, great. Thank you so much for your hard work, Jenny. I'll put Very together the, the open-ended, um, I mean, I kind of clumps them into groups, but I'll at least put them all together and you guys can take a look at them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. One thing I, I do want to toss into the conversation is let's, Keep the meeting on the, the the 15th just around this or around related yes. issues. It can be it can be really easy to, to get a special meeting and then just start. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Only discuss only discussing no action, just yeah. On the topic. You know, thinking about think, well, thinking about community engagement. How to engage community? Right. How to how to get them to do to, to to talk to us when they don't want to stab us through the heart? Um, any other comments on the board survey? Um, the continuous improvement plan. So the principals can talk to you more specifically about um, the overarching goals of the continuous improvement plan, but I did review the continuous improvement plans and those have been sent to Mott Pillar for the Agency of Education to be approved. And of course there's grant funding tied to this. The overarching goals aligned to the SU goals. We talked to you about that that's the way that we would look to do our work around our multi-tiered system of supports to ensure we have really strong universal instruction that meets 80 to 85% of our students' needs. And then a proactive preventative model of intervention, early intervention, and we're gonna to talk to you about the student support budget. And you'll see some of the changes that we're putting in place there tied to this idea of early intervention. Um, and so that is a big part of the continuous improvement plan, as well as continued focus in literacy and the literacy work that we have been doing. Did I miss anything, principals? No, I don't Bonnie think that. camera off. I'm, I guess that means no. No, I think that covers it. Oh, good. 
So if those two overarching goals sound good to you, um, based on the goals that you see in our reports every every uh, month, if you guys could just move to approve those two overarching goals and that really those notes, if the agency asks for them, then we'll have them in the in the board minutes. I've never asked seen them ask for that before, but it is a formality and technicality that we got to do. What yep. exactly was the first goal? It's to keep, create a comprehensive multi-tiered system of supports. And I try to provide some better context to folks about what that means. And it's really about responding to intervention, but really strengthening your universal instruction to best meet all students' needs about 80 to 85%. When we're meeting 80 to 85% of our students' needs and they're performing at grade level, then we know our universal instruction is working. Uh, you're going to get a data report uh, by the principals here in a few minutes that shows you that we're, you know, I feel pretty good about, I think we're seeing some gains in literacy, but I'm uh, very disappointed right now where we're performing in mathematics. And so part of the student support budget too is going to talk to you about how we're trying to address that because we've got about 75% of our students not performing at grade level right now in mathematics. So in terms of the notes, the first goal is, is in terms of the, the multi-tier system of support. Is the second goal just early intervention? The second goal is focused on the literacy work that you guys have started and been investing in. So this is this is something that we uh, approve. We're, we're, we're required to approve every year. Uh, and, and Jamie is... Well, right. You know, this is this is something that, that that it often seems like the state just takes from us and puts it in a file, and only would you to uh, to, uh, get it. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Keith. Well, I think Keith's just not muted. Ah. No, I guess he's not frozen. Um. So yes, this is the the. This is this is important. I mean, in 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 the fact that it guides how we, you know, MTSS and uh, um, the uh, was it positive? What's the, the 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 tide support program we use that I can't remember the name of where you get the hands? PBIS. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> these are programs that are really important to us. We're not just we're not just uh, rubber stamping rubber stamping a a a, a, a social emotional learning. Uh, a, plan um but uh you know i would entertain a motion to approve the uh, uh the annual uh, continuous improvement plan goals so moved. we have a second second any further discussion all those uh in favor of approving the uh, of approving the continuous improvement plan signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. Any nays? The continuous improvement plan is accepted by the board with a unanimous voice vote. The fall academic uh, data report, that is the principles. I think Jamie spoiled that for you guys. Uh, first of all, thank you for supporting the continuous improvement plan goal. Yeah. So what you'll see in our data is a comparison um, it's important to understand it's both buildings together because separately we're too small. It would be identifiable um, in, at some grade levels if you pulled it out even further. Um, so as you can see, our reading scores stayed pretty close to the same from last fall um, to this fall. So that speaks volumes of how much we've um, put into our instruction and makes you hopeful that we're going to have a full year of in-person instruction to be able to continue implementing all of those strategies at the universal level. Um, what does BAS stand for? Yeah, it's the benchmark uh, achievement system. It's used with F and P, so it's a lot of comprehension and understanding. Does that help? It's another, it's another test. It's another way that, that we are. Okay. And it's an in-person, like you and I would read together, Amy. You would read to me, and that there would okay. be questions. I'd be checking for your fluency, accuracy, things like that. Okay. Versus the STAR 360 is given on the computer. Okay. Um, 
And so, so I'll, just, I'll just want to add real quick, Lindy. I think it's important for the context for the board that those scores look similar, but statewide we're seeing large amounts of regression occurring due to right. COVID. So I, I know that the scores don't look better from last fall, but what we didn't see is the amount of regression that one could expect based on what other folks are seeing across the country and in the state um, due to the fact that, you know, we were in a maintenance and learning mode last spring um, and not on um, continuous growth academically. So my, my expectation would be that you would have seen a pretty significant bump if it wasn't for the regression that occurred. Right. I think the other trend we sort of tracked with in math is that um, math, for some whatever reason, and we're starting to understand it a little better, uh, math proficiency dropped more significantly than reading proficiency. And that's, that's happened in our schools also. You can, you can see there's a pretty significant drop there in our grades one through six. Um, and you're saying this if kind of follows the trend of other other schools across the, the state or the nation. The math does. Different. I think we did a little better in the literacy piece. To be frank, I was thinking we were going to see, um, I was thinking we were going to see a bigger drop. Right. Okay. I think the hopeful news here, Lindy and I have talked about this a number of times, I think the hopeful news is that we also expect to see a pretty um, hopefully a pretty significant rebound because I, I think a lot of the drop had to do with sort of um, lack of robust activities. Everybody did uh, the best they could do. Everybody worked really hard and did a great job. But as everyone knows, we went to distance learning with, with very little prep time. Um, and I think what our teachers did was, was, was really outstanding as well as our families and our youngsters. Um, so we're hoping now that we're back in in-person learning for many of our kiddos that, that we'll reverse this trend pretty quickly. When is the next assessment? Uh, yep, thank you. <laughs> January is the next testing window. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. Yet. But it's important to know that Bonnie and I have both set data team meetings with our teachers. So we're looking at it every other week to see student improvement and proof of student learning in these proficiencies, not waiting and hoping until January that there's been an improvement. Wonderful. That's, that's incredible. The other thing, the other thing we want to say, full disclosure, even if we got back to the levels where we were in March, we wouldn't necessarily be um, ecstatic about it because as, um, as two schools, we had a lot of work to do before we left in March. And right. I think I speak for both of us when I say neither one of us are going to be uh, content until every single one of our kiddos um, are strong readers and mathematicians and, um, you know, thinkers and, and things like that. So that's first to say that we have a lot of work to do. Lindy's done a, a tremendous job with our um, materials in, in the F&P program and making sure that we have those aligned and in place. As Jamie said, I think we have further to go in mathematics than we do in literacy, um, and that's certainly what we're what we're taking on now. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I know there's there's not too many that are doing the virtual learning, kind of tracking where they are to make sure they're not right there in front of a teacher how they're doing. Um, I guess they'll you know, make sure that they're keeping up with the rest of them. So that's actually our virtual academy faculty meeting tomorrow, Jenny, is we're working on that to make sure that that's ensured for our virtual kiddos just as it is for in person too. So I'm going over that with all the staff so they're clear and we have clear benchmarks and are monitoring them just as well to make sure that our virtual instruction is um, as efficient as our in-person instruction has been. Right, so the virtual learners did not take the STAR 360 test then, right? No, they did. It just doesn't come with the same fidelity. It's not in this data, but because um, they took it in a different testing window, but it's just taking it at home is a little different than taking it at school for a wide array of reasons. But it does give us a good 
jumping off point um, to make Do sure. Do you separate out the scores? I'm sorry, two questions. I, I didn't hear both, sorry. So Which, those numbers are just for the in-school students? Correct. Yes. Do you sorry. break out the scores for the two diff two for uh, at home versus in school in person? Yes, it is broken out um, because the um, at home or virtual learners, they in a class, they're, they're from eight different schools. So it's broken out so each building can see how their virtual learners are doing. But I also have access to all that data as well as their um, teachers too. So we can use that. But the data you're looking at, Keith, just for so we're clear, the data you're looking at is for in-person kiddos. Right, but will okay. we be able to see both in the future? I would think so. Yeah, we should have the tech kinks worked out. Poor Ray, he's my number one person right now. But we should have the technological kinks worked out of the assessment happening at home that we'll be able to have it done in the same window next time around. Okay. Ray, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to add something. Uh, just lots of hope <laughs> and affirmation. Does anyone else have any other questions on the academic data report? Okay, then let's move into the, uh, the budget piece, the student support page of the budget. So we sent today the one page draft and you'll know on the bottom, this was the first draft and it's for discussion purposes only. This would be for your student services. So you can see in the left column that that's your principals and administrators, administrative assistants as well. Intervention, guidance. Just a second, just a second Tara. Ray, do you have a, this document so you could uh, post it so folks can? I don't believe I do. I'll, I'll reforward it. Thank you. Okay, I just sent it. So the guidance team, the nurse, uh, your regular education para and then substitutes. And within each of those function codes, this is salaries, benefits, supplies, dues and fees, all the normal stuff that you would see in our long form. This is just a quick snapshot of what our projections are based on the staffing needs that we talked to Bonnie and Lindy about on Friday. Principals, do you want to highlight and provide some context about the, the why of some of the changes and talk about what we're excited about within these changes? And then I can uh, hit on any other additional um, programming around the why and then board, I would love to entertain any questions or comments you may have. I think one of the things that we're most excited about is the opportunity to have uh, math intervention. It's, a, it's an area that we need to provide a pretty significant additional support in. And so by shifting other parts of the budget around a bit and looking to sort of kind of right size things in our schools, um, we're able to uh, bring on, it looks like, funding for a full-time math interventionist. And um, I think that's a that's a missing piece right now in our in our program. Yeah, and just to echo um, that, it also expands. We currently don't have a full time interventionist at Stockbridge. It's someone who's a point nine position. So we would expand this to full time, and they would be covering literacy and math. And to echo Bonnie, it just really fills in that math gap and support. That we're so looking I for. That, I noticed that it says the SU will include a one a point a 1.0 math intervention. So that would be at the SU level for all schools then? So no, that's for your schools, Amy. And part of okay. that is just around how we have to use our grant funds Got it. to free and reduce lunch rates. And so okay. um, 
they will actually be employed at the SU level and then sent out to you. And that has to do with um, uh, our ability to spend those funds and how we have to go about that. And so it will be your, they'll work with you every day, um, but they'd be employed at the SU level um, due to right now free and reduced lunch rate numbers and how we're able to use the, those monies. Um, so we the, cannot actually, yep, go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say that, so that means that we are paying our share of the, you know, our, our SU share of that, of, of, of that salary for the, I mean, the title funds, um, we're not paying anything for. So the math interventionist is, is completely grant funded, but the mental health counselor, we, we'd be paying probably some portion of that because there's some sort of group grant. No, that, that the mental health counselor is something that your principals asked for. We're going to try to have some type of approach systematically across the SU that we will again use some title funds um, to collaborate with either Washington, uh, either um, Claire Martin Center or the Health Hub um, to create a team of therapists that we can then deploy out into the schools. We may use some MAC funds for that too. Uh, so grant funds will support that work um, to make certain that our students have um, therapeutic interventions occurring at the building level. It's part of why we restructured at the SU. And so it's, I think it's important for us to talk about the student support at the district level. And so that you know, all right, we're down. As you know, we eliminated five positions at the SU for next year, the board approved. We'd added the associate business manager, but part of why we did that was because it freed up um, quite a bit of grant funding that now we can look to deploy differently and part of that uh, strategic plan is that we deploy it out in the buildings in front of students. Um, my sense was that we were starting to get a little top heavy here at the SU office. And so the idea is that we're looking to get more staffing out into the buildings. Um, so overall, you know, based on the fact that you're gonna, we're gonna be trying to provide some additional grant funds to give you some more additional student support, both in math and at the therapeutic lens through a, a mental health counselor. Um, we are looking at about a 2.66% increase around you know 19,307. So one of the things I'd look for you guys to do is to give us a sense of, yeah, that's sounding okay at this point, guys, um, because we will bring this part of the budget back next month in addition to the rest of your instructional staff. So you keep getting it at pieces by chunks. So you're not trying to have all this at once. And so I'd like to get a sense from folks whether or not at this point, this is making sense to them or if folks are feeling like you guys gotta, you gotta go sharpen your pencils or how about X? Is the decrease in the FTE, is that because some of it's going over into the SU numbers? Well, there is uh, there was one position um, that we might look to reduce. Um, at this time, I don't want to talk about it because I'm a big believer that we need to, as management, give some folks a heads up before um, it comes out public. And so the principals... Um, and I would look to have a conversation with them by November, and then we could tell you what that position is in November. I like so the, looking at this. <laughs> you go ahead, go you go first, Amy. A comes before C. Okay, well, I, just, I, I was just clarifying with the because the intervention is you know the line that went up, um, and I thought it was for this math interventionist, but then you were saying that that's covered by title funds. So um, the, that line item went up because of other, other additional um, um, interventionists being put in there. Tara, do you want yes, to talk about there, that? Yes, there are multiple indiv individuals included on the interventionist line. Okay. So you see a larger increase in that because they may potentially have different tiers in their health insurance program. Okay. So all of that, the, this is salaries and benefits that are included in that as well. So okay. where some of your other function codes may not have been the same qu quantity of staff members, 
who may have also been on different health plans or may have been an opt out. So there's different factors within that function code that impact that one more than some of the others. So there, it's not a change in staff. It is just it's it's this it's where we're at. It's just how the raises and all the everything. Yeah. And we're not yeah. Sure. And we're not. I'm not prepared this budget cycle to talk to folks about exactly what what that is, um, because I I don't think that that does us a service as management to talk about. Yeah. What the actual no, dollar figures are. And then with the subs, is that? Oh. We just lost Amy. Amy just got dropped. Um, yeah, I'd love to talk about the subs real quick. This is something you I'm take that on, Jamie. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. I, it's yeah, something yeah. that we're looking to deploy across the SU. And so it's the idea one, um, schools, I, I think uh, traditionally, we've not done a bad job about it, but just under budget in the sub area uh, historically. And um, so we're looking at making certain that we budget appropriately to cover subs. And also we're looking to bring someone into your school community. Um, and I think that the schools have been enjoying it. We've had floater subs um, that have serviced our students daily um, due to COVID. We wanted folks to be trained up in the procedures, to be here daily in the event that someone was out. And so what this budget includes is, is that we bring on one person that becomes part of the Rochester Stockbridge school community in the sub role um, and is an everyday sub. They'd show up every day um, to substitute um, and then we would utilize them across the two campuses in the event that someone was out so that it just does lengthen your bench a bit. Um, so there are some extra monies put in the sub line to make certain we have the ability to do that. Have we been able to hire those subs yet, Jamie? We have, yeah, we do have COVID subs. Okay. Across every district of the SU. And if that, if that sub is not needed because knock on wood, um, all our, our staff was able to be in, they are being deployed to, to supplement. Hopefully they're, they're doing something more than just being an additional recess monitor. They're, they're, no, they're, they, they're, they absolutely are. I, see that. They're 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 sure. I certainly like the idea that, you know, we were seeing, and no insult to, 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 to Bonnie and, and Lindy and, and, and the principal's admin, you know, that we're pivoting to, sh to, to, to put money into um, intervention and into subs and pulling it from administration. Um, I think that's, you know, that's pretty positive. Um, reg regular ed para is going down. That is that because certain students are, are, are no longer with us. And, and it's just it's it's a it's a cost savings based on our on our uh, uh, current student population, or is that a cost savings because we're, we're we decided we can be lean and mean? It's it stays the same FTE wise. I, okay. so I can't yeah. explain the difference, so I'm going to look yeah. at Tara. Yeah, I was just I was I was looking at was going. We saved a thousand dollars. That just seems such a weird it's number. Maybe someone got divorced or something. It's pure factor, Carl, of what was budgeted in FY20 versus what's your actual in 21. Okay. Um, last question. Um, you're showing the increase of 2.66, um, two and two thirds percent. Um, is that the benchmark that you're shooting for across the budget you're developing? Is there, I mean, I, obviously we're in public session. But that number is hard to take without any context. Um, Actually, so the way we're budgeting is zero, zero budget. So we built the, this budget based on what we thought our needs were. We didn't start with a percentage and say, how do we get there? Okay. So zero based budgeting. So that happened to be where we ended up. When we sat down, we didn't say we got to get a 3%. We didn't say we got to get a 2.5. Every one of these budgets throughout the SU, we said, what do we need? How do we, how do we strengthen programming and uh, analyze each position um, okay. around personnel? And so that's where we came out. And that's why I would look for you guys then to say, all right, guys, you're at 2.66% now. This is how we think based on the current climate that you need to be looking at as we go. 
Well, you know, you know, cost of living is 1.6. So this is a point over that. Um, however, average school budgets increase 3% per year. So you're under that. What I, I, I don't think we can really speak to, or I don't feel comfortable as a board speaking to, you know, a percentage cap or uh, a floor. But what I, what I would like to see is when you give us the next piece of whatever that is, that you, 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 you chunk whatever, you know, if you said it was regular instruction, you chunk that into the regular instruction cost. And then you also show us what, what now our overall budget cost is so that we can see, you know, not just what this piece where you say this is zero budget and you say zero budget, we really need to spend 2.66 more. This is the money we really need versus the, so here's the zero budget cost on the teachers. And that now puts our total cost here. So yep, that we that's can, exactly what we'll do. See, because I very much like the idea of showing us the budget in wedges of the pie. You know, here's the administration, here's the teachers, here's operating costs, you know, so on and so forth. Here's SU costs. Um, but I know that, at least for my mind, the biggest thing with our budget and percentage increases is where we're, where we're sending our 7 through 12ers because we have no choice over that. And what all y'all are spending at the SU, what, what are you guys spending down by exit three? And how much is that going to cost us? Because we pay, we pay, we pay the SU and we pay the, 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 the sending tuitions before we pay this 2.66. So while 2.66 sounds pretty okay, if I'm going to find out that my, my um, sending tuitions are going up 11%, 2.66 is going to have to go to under, you know, it's going to have to go negative. See what I'm saying? Yep. No, that's good. Yeah, you the pie will continue to get built, right? And we'll keep it broken down like this. So you'll see, you'll say it will show student support. Reminder: two point six six. Next piece: one point five. The total of those two together equates this bottom line and this percentage. I think that's what you're you're saying, right, Carl? Oh yeah, yeah. And yep. I, I mean, I, I understand that we don't know yet what. Woodstock and what Sharon Academy and what all the, you know, what all the other schools are going to charge our district for our kiddos. You know, we don't know yet. We, we haven't passed an SU budget, so we don't know yet what we've got to, you know, what we've got to pay you guys first. Um, but, you know, keeping, keeping track of that because the context of the 2.66 doesn't really matter until we know some of those, you know, unmovables. Does anyone else have any other uh, other comments on this? All right, then we are now at the point. If I let me check my agenda and make sure I'm not jumping again. Yep, we are now at the point where we are going to go into the quick executive session uh, to discuss real estate transactions, uh, confidential real estate transactions. We would invite in we would invite in Tara to that conversation, and we would invite in our attorney David Rue. Otherwise, it needs to be just board members. And so I'll wait till Ray turns off the recording and then I'll get sugared out. Carl, you're going to let uh, the principals and I come in? Oh, yes, administration too. Are we going into another Chair, did meeting? I hear a motion in a second? I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Is Ray setting up another meeting link? Yeah, how, how are we doing this? We have 19 people on the call, so it makes more sense for Saul to get on another yeah, link and come back. Can you do that, Ray? Yep. You can send us a meeting link while I entertain uh, entertain a motion, get it seconded and passed. So moved. Put the work. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to go into executive session to discuss a, a con confidential aspects of a real estate transaction, including uh, the board, our administration, our uh, attorney, and executive session got up. Oh, thank you for uh, turning on record, Ray. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Our very, very promised short record session was, or uh, executive session was uh, far longer than we expected, and we apologize for that. Um, there is a statement that uh, we're coming out with, and if I can find it. I think Jenny's ready to read it. Yeah, I have it if you don't have it, Carl. Thank Please go ahead and read it. Uh, so the Rochester Stockbridge School Board is working with its consultants, including lawyers, wastewater engineers, and surveyors to define the scope and size of the high school property that it will convey 
that it will propose to convey to the town for $1 in the near future so as not to adversely affect the elementary school or the delivery of educational services. Once that plan is ready, it will be shared with the Rochester Select Board and the public. Thank you, Jenny. Um, it's important to also to 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 also note that um, in you know in, in the efforts of being transparent in the conversation that happened in executive session, um, one of the goals that was reiterated was that the board very much would like to have this problem resolved and not in the 21-22 budget. Um, Ethan, are there any other comments you might want to add? Well, I'm, I have to say I'm not exactly sure. One of our discussions was whether we needed to keep these discussions in executive session or not. And I would say there was no consensus among the board about how we pr proceeded with that, whether we make this public or make this private. Um, uh, we followed ultimately the advice of our lawyer and our, kept the discussions private for now. Um, uh, I, and I think it's, um, Keith, what, is there something you would say that was not included in that statement? I think your state, I would like to hear your, what you said at the end. Well, Keith, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, all I was saying is that I, I think we need to be fully transparent with the community. And I think that the discussions we have regarding the, um, what we do with the high school building should be had in the, in the public forum. I agree with Ethan. Um, and that's what I'd like to see the board do moving forward. I would add to that, that one of the instructions we gave to our, you know, superintendent and our, uh, superintendent and our, uh, and our attorney in terms of um, the, 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 the consultants and, and such that were mentioned in the, in the statement were that the goal is still what the board said its goal was when we announced after the budget was voted down, we announced our reduced budget and we said that we were working, uh, you know, we were not having the building used for any educational purposes uh, during this year. Um, that we're still following forward on trying to keep that process moving forward. Um, in terms of building use, in terms of disposal of building. Obviously, complicated real, real estate and transactions, like selling a high school, are hard and obviously a lot of that needs to happen um in you know as our attorney reminded me like 20 million times carl you can't talk about that um you know some of those details need to be kept uh, uh, uh private but i think it's very very important i think ethan and and, and megan and amy and jenny and, and keith will all agree that the board's overall goal is to not have excess building in Rochester on the ballot. If we can do it, we are really trying really hard to do it so it's not necessarily next year. I can't promise that, and my attorney is probably rolling his eyes that I even mentioned that that might be an alternative because he never wants me to say anything until we can guarantee it. But that is what we are working towards, is divesting that building and, you know, um, consolidating all the educational services we need as our administration, you know, advises us to do, and our superintendent, our superintendent advises us to do into the one building. We understand that goal, and that's what our community wants, and we saw that in that survey we looked at. Um, you know, stay tuned and please be patient. Is that a fair statement? And please feel free other board members or administration people to tell me how I've got it wrong.
Carl, I think we lost you there for a minute. Are we oh, getting no. ready to move on? I yeah, no, I, I I was. I was actually I'd actually muted and 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 shut myself off so I could eat more chili. Um and you guys could tell me how I was mistaken. <laughs> no, I think we're good. I mean I, I would suggest that we it is a it is becoming late in the evening. I know we still have fifteen about twenty five more minutes left on the agenda. Yeah. Plus another so agenda. I would like to hear about the superintendent eval evaluation tool. We can move to the next agenda item easily. Like I said, I just thought that when we came out of uh, out of executive session, there might be more comment. So I had I had actually was going to go get more water. <laughs> so I'd start I'd started walking away when when you guys had uh, called me again. So let's move to uh, um, uh, seven. Well, Carl, there's. Is it you breaking up or do I have bad connection? I, I'm missing half of what Carl's saying. Is it my connection or? Okay, I, I've turned off my camera in case it's mine. Does that improve it? Improve, okay. Amy? And that has, yes. Okay, Carl. I don't. Yeah, no. I was just okay. saying that I thought that we we had we had reached a good point um, in the building conversation. And we were ready to move on to uh, the superintendent evaluation piece, 7.6. If you have something more to say about buildings or about that process, please continue. I'm not trying to hush you. Um, yeah, I think, um, Megan, we had talked earlier uh, uh, in regards to um, having a liaison between um, the – uh, school board and and the select board and and um, uh, and we had discussed that um, you know maybe I or uh, Ethan would would be maybe that point person. I think Amy, you said you would do it. <clears throat> I think that sure. Is yeah, I, I think so. Okay. I think yeah. you'd be awesome at that, so, Amy. I that's fine. I just um so so yes. I just wanted to yes. to um get that's that a out clear there. Statement that we have a liaison. Um, that you are volunteering. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm not volunteering you, but I think that's what you said earlier when we talked that you would right. be the liaison. Yeah. Between uh, the, the, the entities, the, the school board, the select board and, and any third party entity. Yeah. yeah. No, we... I... go ahead, Carl. Um, can we, I, I would like to, because you're going to be having formal conversations for the board. I would like the board to uh, entertain a motion to, to uh, appoint, Amy Wilt as the uh, uh, liaison between the school board and uh, uh, the select board. So moved. Do I hear second. a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So thank you so much for volunteering to do that really important, important role of being the communication uh, uh, channel be be between the two groups. You know, um, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say that one of the things we talked about in executive session is about, you know, the timeliness of moving this, this piece forward. So please, if there's select board or envision in uh, Rochester people on, on, on this, this call as well, reach out to Amy talk about what y'all need to talk about and then bring it back to the board. Because again, one of the things the board had committed to was trying to divest itself of one of the two Rochester buildings by the end of the school year. Um, all right, the next point is the um, 7.6 superintendent evaluation tool. This is very quick, I, I stepped up um, there's to be a committee put together of uh, board members and I believe faculty as well, Jamie, um, to evaluate, to come up with a process for evaluating the work of the superintendent. Um, I immediately in the meeting of the executive board stepped up to say I would do it. And then I thought, and then others suggested um, I take it back to my board and see if there were others who were interested in being on this committee. Um, they will be creating a, a whole cri uh, criteria for evaluating Jamie's work and, and will meet regularly to do so. 
Um, I'm here simply to ask you if anybody else is interested in being on that committee or if you have any um, input. I would do that with you, Ethan, if, if, if you want me. What's that? I would do that with you, Ethan, if you want me. Okay, good. Okay. Then that may be all we need to do. Um, cool. Then, oh, and then my computer, my other computer screen just went bright, blank to tell me that. Ethan, you are on about outdoor education. So I want to make this efficient as I can. Um, first, start to the question. I understood it that three hours of outside time per day was not a recommendation, but it was actually a health standard for... Um, one of the ways we could go back to school. And I'm hearing um, incidental comments back and forth about people not being, uh, not classes not being outside three hours a day. Um, computers don't want to take the computers outside. Oh, it's too cold. And I uh, just want to emphasize that I think this is, this is a health issue, a corona issue, that these classes happen outside. Now, the second part of this is, and this is why I asked you earlier, Jamie, about outdoor education. It's not just some fanciful thing that's further down the line. One of the ways you can keep kids, students, and teachers engaged outside later, because a lot of people are asking me, how long are these tents going to last? Um, and I'm like, they can last a long time if you know how to teach these kids outside so they're not cold. And that's how to engage them in the outside so they're not just sitting there trying to type when it's, you know, 37 degrees outside. Um, so I, I'm seeing a sort of lack of cohesion in the approach of how you're using these tents and how we're approaching outside education. So I'd like to have the administration talk about especially going forward to a full school day, are we in, is three hours still the standard? Is it going up? Um, I'm just not hearing enough information about that and I would like to know more. So Ethan, it was a recommendation from the task force and certainly it's research-based that we would try to do three hours. I will tell you that my high school students are not outside at all in most cases. So it's definitely not a standard that was set um, by the Department of Health or agency of education. We're certainly, we're trying to use the outside um, to make certain folks felt comfortable and to build up stamina um, and to ensure that folks felt safe to come back. I personally believe that our students are demonstrating that they can engage really well outside if it's done correctly. And I think there's pockets where we're doing it better um, in some places than others. And I think there's others that just jumped in um, at a deeper level around that. And so I'll let the principals talk about what they've been doing, um, but I just wanted to, to give you a perspective across the SU um, around the outside versus the inside. And I don't know who wants to jump in first. Like I know an example, Lindy, I think you have some classes that are outside almost all day and some that are not outside almost all day. Uh, yeah. I was actually gonna say, I have kids requesting to spend more time in their classroom than the teachers would like to. They really enjoy that outdoor space and are very grateful for that. Um, we're expanding to some activities in the woods. We have tapped into our local resources in our building. We have two teachers who came to us from Nature's Outdoor Classroom. So they performed uh, in service at the beginning of the school year and have been working with other people to make sure that's happening. Uh, I would say the kids are staying really active. We're definitely hitting three hour mark in Stockbridge. Um, I wanna say the exception was probably last Friday because uh, it was a little chillier and the kids were moving in and out. I would say they just transitioned more. And that was when they, one way they got more exercise as well, which was good for them. Um, as we go to the full day, we are keeping some of the enrichment model and using some of that extra time for more intervention blocks for kiddos to make sure kids are getting some extra academic support. Currently that's happening outdoors. So that'll continue to happen outdoors as long as possible. Um, I think it's important to emphasize, I really appreciate that outdoor education. I also need to ensure that our instruction is as explicit as possible for kiddos. So they're making gains 
as well. And we're trying to find the right balance. I just, uh, I can't give an hour timeline for the full day. I got to work through that with the staff in the building. Lindy, is there ways that we can support you to encourage more outdoor ed education? Because, you I'm know, telling you, my kiddos what we don't have is delivery pizza. What we do have in our neighborhoods is freaking woods. No, I, you well, know, everybody's been great. The community has been great. I, uh, I mean, I'll bring it back to the staff to make sure there's not something I'm missing. But I really feel strongly, it, I kid you not, when I go to have lunch with kids, they're begging to come inside because they've been outside all morning. Um, okay. Can, so, we, can we set out, can, you know, as we, as we, because that's going to keep going even higher as it starts to get to like frosty temperatures. Are there warming huts or ideas that we're thinking about to try to get brainstorming? as classes, at least at Stockbridge, on what that means. We've started to add layers to our, like, did you send your kid with all the different layers as part of our health screener form? Sure. Things like that. So they're brainstorming as classes on what will make them more successful learners as the temperatures start to change. So sure. the 1918 flu in Vermont, did you know that what families did was they they took rocks to their wood stoves and they warmed them and families brought warmed rocks to the school to put into the huts where the kids were so they could learn outside and keep themselves warm with these warmed rocks. And I'm not saying we need a warm rock, um, <laughs> uh, you know, thing, but what I, what I really, we're successful when we think outside the box. So how can you tell us, because, I have, I, I've heard from, you know, a half dozen families in the last three days, you know, you got those white huts at Stockbridge Central, what you going to do when you can't be under the tent because they're not warm? And I, I'd like us, you know, knowing a plan and putting it forward and thinking about what we can do, and if there's grants or there's ways that we can support you as a board, I think it's really, really, because... What I don't hear from the parents is you're not letting my kid inside. I'm pissed off at you. No, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is we're outside so much right now and we're getting there. I, we had a couple cool days. It's on the radar. Teachers need some time to figure out what's working and what they need. Yeah. They just don't have those answers right now. It, and you want to be outside as much as possible. That's the honest answer. Yeah. Um, is there, and, the, and there's, if, if there's anything y'all think about, that the board could do, please reach out to us. We'll have a special meeting. We'll pass that motion. Okay. Because it seems like the feeling that I at least have gotten, and I'm on the Stockbridge side where everyone's crabby, but also people that are crabby don't talk to me because they're crabby. Um, but, you know, it's, it's working really well. Y'all are doing a great job. I suppose I buried the lead right there, but yeah. you know, congrats to you guys for doing all the, all, all the great work you're doing at the school with the kids. But I really, I want to, if we can be thinking about what we need ahead of time so we can be rolling it out. So it seems natural and appropriate. And it's not like, well, we're inside now, but you know, next month, you know, right. I, I want us to be, Anything you can do to be on top of it. And please understand that you do not need to wait for a monthly board meeting. Excellent. If there's something you needed, we can we can convene, give that to you, and go back to our, our, our pitiful lives. And Excellent. Carl, Thank you. Time to... check. Sorry. Bonnie, do you have anything to add? You know, oh, I, I, thought, I thought they just put a time check on me. Yes. I, and I was saying you knew I'd go over. There. All right. So we are at public comment, I think. If there is any public that would like to comment, I will go through a list of uh, people that are still on, on, the, on the call. You have to identify yourself and, and be a, uh, a Stockbridge or a Rochester um, uh, resident. And I'm going to start, I'm going to say your area code to the last two, two digit, digits of your uh, phone number. So 80202. And then I will move on. 
And now I've been 80248. Star six on mute. And as Ray pointed out, it's star six to a mute. So I'll go back to 80202. Star six to a mute. Okay, 80248. Hey, 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 Kyle. Hey. It's Tim Pratt. Hey, Timmy. How are you? Good, you? Oh, okay. So I just want. <laughs> yeah, good. So I just want to make sure that you and Ethan understand that it's cold out there for those kids. And if they're saying they want to go in, they're already mingling from 1.30 until after 3 o'clock. So it's not a big deal if the kids want to go in and stay warm. If they want to go out, they can. But to force them to do it, isn't doing any educational good. So that that's my spiel. Okay. I, there are strategies in education that have kids active and not just sitting outside. And I think that's the big difference we're looking at is how you can do sixth grade work, level work, being active outside and, and how you do it. You don't have them sitting still for two legs so their fingers get cold. And this is what I'm really wanting people to step up to is the idea of rethinking how you're teaching outsides because it's a safety issue. They are safer outside than they are inside, especially before this HVAC work gets done. Right. Bonnie, can you, can you speak to Tim about how you're handling those concerns in your classrooms? Oh, you're muted. I I, yeah, I would echo um, much of what Lindy said. We're working to get there. I can't say that kids are out for a full three hours every single day. I can say that most days, most classes come close to that. We are trying to figure out new ways of instructing. Um, we don't have a faculty that is um, highly trained in outdoor education. Um, we're getting up to speed on some aspects of that. It is a bit of a balance. This week for the first time, and I think it was because there was a rainy day last week and it was, you know, a little bit less beautiful than it has been this fall, I took a couple of parent calls uh, regarding they did not want their children out when it was rainy, when it was chilly, when it was cold. So um, I, guess, I guess the best thing to say is that we're working at this on several fronts. I'm certainly aware it is safer when we can be outside. Um, and we're working hard to do that, but there are also instructional needs that we uh, haven't yet figured out how to do as well outside as we do inside, especially some of the more uh, needs for more explicit direct instruction. But it is a, it is a goal. We're continually working toward it. Um, the Rochester campus faculty is also talking Thursday on as the day expands, uh, what type of outdoor activities and outdoor instruction can we build in to the extra time that we're going to have. And Lindsay, do you have any comments on that? How's that working at Stockbridge? I mean, I would say the same to echo the same. We have someone who comes like I said, a classroom teacher came to us from Nature's Outdoor Classroom. She's showing us some active ways to keep kids engaged that isn't just sitting at a desk typing, but we've got to continue to build on it. Okay. I, I, so, one thing I would say, I think it's an, you know, an important distinction to make is um, some of our teachers are, are very good at taking what we do inside, outside which is not necessarily outdoor education. They're working to understand that better, but uh, they haven't had a lot of time to really do that. Their heart's certainly in the right place and their desire is there. Um, but we have a ways to go to say that we have a um, uh, extremely robust outdoor education program. Are we moving to the, towards that? We are, we are moving towards that. Excellent, thank you. Okay, um, so 802, your number ends in 48. Do you have any comment? Thank you, 802, your number ends in 97. Do you have any comment? Uh, 
Uh, thank you. Robert M Mager, Mieger, I'm Hello? not sure how to pronounce your last Hello? name. Yes, Hello? it's Robert Mayer. I do have a comment. Uh, I uh, hate to catechize you, uh, catechize you on the uh, open meeting law, but uh, I'd like to state a couple of things, uh, make a couple of observations. Okay. Um, for one, you know, this is not, a, you are allowed under the open meeting law um, to do certain things in executive session, but it's your yeah. choice. Okay, you're, um, uh, and I understand that your your uh, attorney is going to give you a very conservative view of what should be public and what is not, and so what his, his advice is probably very legal. But it's your responsibility to balance that against the public's need to know. I mean, that, and to operate in the spirit of the open meeting law. You know, if you okay. if if you look from you know at three one three one says after making a specific finding that premature general public knowledge would be clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage, and then one F is confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. Well, right. like, you know that's the question is 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 would you be on in a sub, sub, placed in a substantial disadvantage and i don't mean politically i mean of it substantially i don't think they they intended that it being a political disadvantage that correct i i i, I agree with you okay um, and the, the, the other thing is is that you know, you're, when you enter a, an executive session, there's two questions you should ask. One, is it legal? And two, is it necessary? Okay, that's, so uh, it's, just to conclude, it's my own personal opinion that there's nothing, you know, this is supposed to be, we, we, I, I understand that you're, you want to get rid of the building, uh, I, I I thought that it was to uh, to that you intended it to go to the um, uh, to be sold to the Rochester town if possible. Um, uh, that certainly is not clear at this point. Um, but at any rate, it, it's my personal view that all of these discussions from this point on should be in the public, even if it's politically inconvenient. And you, the, I mean, you really should, in general, I mean, one, you're the agenda item of uh, the number 11 of executive session, confidential attorney, client communication. You really should be more specific than that when you go in. It doesn't serve you or the- Right. We actually, to, we actually went in. We it actually, doesn't serve you or the, the public to, make that so general because people it, it people will have a lot of suspicion of what you're you're covering and the other question is is are you know are you meeting the criteria of of um you know 3131 that it's that it's uh, uh you are at a substantial disadvantage is that and are you discussing more than just the attorney client communication you know that's um, very important, and I, I don't think you're doing doing a good job at at this, and and therefore creating a a, a public relations problem. Okay, um, I would say that I personally think, and you know, I guess I'm the guy that gets to personally think that because I'm the chair, um, that it was appropriate. Um, we came out of executive session and 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 made you know a statement about um our intentions um discussing how we want to enforce those intentions it's a very complicated issue if you think about it because there's 
you know, there, there, there's a building that has a value that is more than a dollar. That building's value um, or, or that building gets to be conveyed to the select board of Rochester for a dollar. Um, how that, you know, that's one of those kind of educational municipal sort of agreements that are made because that's how all the um, merger agreements worked. Um, obviously, that building is worth more than a dollar. Um, understanding how we're going to discuss that and how we're going to work with that and what we're going to do about that and when it's going to perhaps transition from a school budget to a private budget or to a town budget or to whoever assumes the responsibility of that building, I'm, I'm sure you can agree that there's confidential aspects of that discussion. Yes, yeah, Carl, I hate to interject. I just, I think the simple way is, is that the board did ask itself those two questions and at that time decided, yes, that this was appropriate for executive session by the majority of the board. Jamie summed that up much better than I was doing. Okay, but I, I, as, as a member of the public, um, uh, I, especially when we're trying to enter into a, a collaborative uh, venture with the town and with, a private, with third party entities, um, I do not believe, and I'm con conveying my opinion to you all, uh, based on many, many years on school boards, uh, that this is not that that this is not the best way to enter into a collaboration. Okay. Are you a Rochester or a Stockbridge voter, sir? I am a Ro Rochester. Okay. And that I'm 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 that needs to be entered into the record because it's important that we know that people we're having conversations with are. are allowed to have the conversation. Um, so as far as there are, this is a very difficult question to answer because I have to think about what my board is asking me to say and not say and what um, you know, my lawyer or the, the board's lawyer has me to say and not say. I think um, at this time, you just, Robert, I think that we definitely understand what you're saying. No. And, uh, I, well, I think it's important to say that our goal is to do the best thing to benefit the students of, of the, 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 the art, you know, Rochester and Stockbridge. We have an asset that is a building. It is an asset to the town of Rochester. It could be an asset to a third party uh, uh, purchaser who might want to start a nursing home or a factory or you know, a collaborative working space or whatever they might want to do. You know, it's an asset. We need to consider as a board and we're doing this as a board. So when I'm saying this, this is not Carl giving a Stockbridge opinion or Carl giving a Carl opinion. This is Carl giving a united opinion of the board, which is that it is our job for our taxpayers and for our students to exploit that asset as best we can. What that means is that not only do we need to use that to, to educate our children as best we can? We have to consider whether we want to divest ourselves of that and do that as best we can. Our feeling at this point has been, and we've made this clear in many, many, many board meetings, is that we don't feel we need two buildings. There is no reason for us to have two buildings at that Rochester campus. Our question has been, which building is the best building? And we now seem to be pretty much sugared on, and I am only speaking for what my observation of our conversation is because we have not made any formal declar declaration of this. 
our best feeling of what that building is, is that elementary school building. So we are pushing very hard to work with the Rochester Select Board to see if they want to assume that building for a dollar and use it as, as a community as an asset. Because, dude, if you could buy that, buy, buy that auditorium for a buck, I might want to do that. Um, we're trying to push this process along as well because it's been, it's been a number of budget cycles and we don't want to put that building onto another budget cycle if we possibly can. There are things in that negotiation that need to be kept private. For example, how do we subdivide that property and dry that property line? Because in our, in our mind as a school board, it's most important that we do that in a way that benefits the students. And Carl, now Carl, that benefits, Carl can we, let me move on to some other callers. I think it's, it is getting late and I think we just need to be efficient in our answers if we can. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry, I, 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 I apparently dove too deep. Thank you, go ahead. Um, we are now at um, 802.97 or an 802.02, sorry. It's 97, Carl, and I think she unmuted now, so she should be good to go. Great. Can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Okay, the, this is Charity Colton from Stockbridge. Hi, Charity. The question sort of is in alignment with something Robert just said, and that's the simplicity of the statements that the board came back with. And I just would like to ask for clarification on my understanding of the original article of agreement information, which was that a town could purchase the building in this particular type of situation for the $1 plus debt incurred in coordination with that building prior to or during the merger. Is that no longer the case? No, that is exactly the case. I was just, I was just saying the simple $1 to make it, to, to, to make it easier to understand. Yes. So if my, my request would be that it's again, similar to what Robert just said, I'm from South so I'm reiterating this, a similar aspect to a Rochester resident that in some cases it is feeling very much like we are being given extremely simplistic information that makes it very much feel that we are being bamboozled or withheld from information that is pertinent to the situation. I realize that there are aspects that for legal reasons need to be done in executive session. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I think it would behoove the board greatly to be more uh, distinctive with the information they provide so that you do not continue to get town residents from both sides that feel like we are being kept in the dark at the interest of not being told something we don't want to hear. I think everyone can agree we'd rather see honesty and transparency at this point and not continued evasion on the side of the board. And when you make an extremely simplistic 20-word statement, that is exactly what you're doing, is evading the true concept. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Thank you, Charity. Um... <sighs> This is this is difficult to speak to, and I will probably upset our attorney and 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 a little bit upset our board. But the general, I, you know, we are trying to move towards a resolution of the situation. It's hard to discuss details because the details aren't known yet. We don't know where the property line is going to be drawn. We don't know where these things are going to happen. What we're trying to push towards and what we said in our meeting last month 
and before is that we would prefer, and I use the word prefer as like a particular word because I don't want to promise. I don't want to say we're not going to have it, but we would prefer to have this situation sorted for the 21-22 budget. That is our goal. That is what something we are working towards. We have attorneys because you got to have attorneys. We have our administration involved in what resources they, you know, they want and how that property line would work and where the playground's going to be and all that stuff in terms of dividing the property lines. Those sorts of conversations are still going forward. What the board is saying or what the board is working towards is the other side of that conversation because we can decide where the where the where where the, the 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 high school and the school board and the and the elementary school line split and who septic is what but what we need to decide is who's taking that other piece of that puzzle and that is what we are working on aggressively with the Rochester stock uh, Rochester Stockbridge the Rochester um, select board we are trying very hard to solve this problem and we are trying very hard to be you know transparent about it and it is 10 o'clock at night and i have been talking about this for three and a half hours and that is not your problem that is mine but the point here is that either you're going to believe that we're trying to solve this or you're not and and <laughs> I'm trying to solve this. Are you? Carl, that's that's good. That's a good answer. Thank uh, you, Ethan. I guess and, I'm a little uh, offended. By, um I guess I'm a little offended by being asked if I'm trying to solve this. Okay. I guess I guess well, first of all, I totally overspoke. Yeah. It is late. I am tired. I should not be on this call as a personal person because this call is supposed to be about me being the, the school board chair. Yes. So I apologize for, for misspeaking because I let my personal opinions come out. And many of you have gotten mad at me because I haven't done that, but this time I did. So I think... I'm going to leave this meeting. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I have a second. Um, I Wait could also take over and finish. We do have a, an executive session. If Carl, if you need to step down, we have a quorum and I could take over for you and finish out the meeting. Um, would that be acceptable to you or would you rather adjourn? Uh, can you give me like two minutes to catch my breath? Oh. Um, are there any more calls waiting to happen? Do you yeah, want even to... star four eight needs to unmute. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. I don't think she's had a chance to talk yet. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, a good thing. So if somebody could feed me the numbers, I'd be happy to take over. Star it's four star eight, four would eight. you please unmute uh, star six and give us your comment if you would. Thank you. Are you available? And then, Lindy, do we have another number? Star after... um, six oh. to unmute. Star six to unmute, if you're there. Making... Sure. Carl, it might be just worth asking does anyone has, have any uh, extra, yeah. any other public Any comments? other comments? To, and let's just, we'll get to that. Um, um, I'm getting. For what are you some, getting, Lindy? I'm just hearing it's Joanne on Star Four Eight, and she's trying to unmute, but it's not letting her. So I don't know what how to help. That's what I'm trying to say. She can hear us, but I can't get her unmuted. Yeah, don't know what to do. This is sorry, Joanne. Um, 
sometimes technology decides for us. I think Ray's coming to the rescue, it looks oh, like. Oh, good. Well, no, no, I don't know about that. Uh, Joanne, you could drop out and come right back. Probably a good try. It will take a minute, of course. Yep. Is there another call, Lindy? Do you see another call? My list is just not. Um, yep. You know, I think star 02 was called. Uh, I don't think that person had. I think we hit everyone personally. Yeah, I think yeah, that's everyone. Let's, let's wait for Joanne. If. If she can hear us, if she can't get back in, sometimes calling with a, a different phone if she has her cell phone might help. Uh, she's she's going to send me her question, so I'll read it if you're okay, okay with that. Good. So, Jan Joanne, if you're okay, you can send me that question. I'll read it for you. I'm seeing dots, just to give a little play-by-play -play. Mm -hmm. coming. Thank you, Lindy. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, for my, I'm when I'm on these meetings with the my, I have to use my iPad, and I have, I, I can't see the chat. I can't find it on my screen yet. I can on the computer. Um, Joanne's uh, question was in regard yeah. to the liaison for the communicating with this. Um, Rochester Select Board. She wants to know if there can also be a Stockbridge liaison. So there's representatives from both towns communicating with the Select Board. Uh, with the, the Stockbridge Select Board? No, sorry, with the Rochester Select Board. So like Amy's representing part of that conversation. Is there also a Stockbridge person that could be there? Am I saying that right, Joanne? There's a li liaison. Yeah, I, I want to clarify. It's It's the liaison is to transfer information back and forth. It is not to make any dealings or to, to promise anything or to discuss anything really more than just being able to uh, bring information back and forth that, you know, the, 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 the school board is position is we're, we're at this stage and then to talk with the um, select board and, and then tell us, you know, have an liaison with the select board of, well, this is where we are with it. So we're all on the same page. We're able to roll this giant stone to, forward together. I would add um, that the way that the, the, the agreement is written is that um, this is not, you know, this is, this is a first right of refusal. This means that the Rochester, um, you know, when the school board decides they want, that it wants to divest itself of a building, the Rochester Select Board has a first right of refusal to give them a dollar and take it. Um, right. I think she's just still saying... Um, she's wanting equal representation. Yes, thank so you. She feels like it's equal. And... Uh, it would have to be uh, uh, Keith for the next month or so until after the election um, or Jenny or you who would do it. And I mean, I don't no. know if that, would, well, it, if, that it, if, it, if that gets the image of fairness across that Joanne's looking for, we could investigate that. How about we leave no, it? It's not, it, it would not it would not be with us. Janet, you know, the, the, the first right of re refusal is solely to the Rochester Select Board. No, Carl. Yeah, Carl, Carl, that's not the question. That's not what yeah. the question was. I'm no, sorry, I think you missed the first part of the question. It. First part of the question was, in addition to Amy being a liaison with the Rochester Select Board, to the Rochester Select Board with our school board, could there also be a Stockbridge school board member that's part of the liaison Team. So that's a two-person team that would. I do... would encourage all all people to come. To yeah, no, I think I, I think certainly that would that that would be helpful. But ultimately, that's uh, ultimately that's up to the Rochester Select Board. No, we don't we don't have we as a board have no legal right or anything to say about how Rochester Select Board makes that decision. As David would tell us, 
and hopefully he's not still here building us. But as David would tell us, the way this works is the the the, the RSUD school board says we have deemed this building unnecessary. Carl, Carl I don't think that's the question. Carl, that's not the what, question. What the is can asking you trust me? us that we're working on the question here? Ethan, right. move along. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. what I hear is yeah. Ethan, so, is Ethan saying something worth I, considering. I, 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 uh, Joanne, we hear your point. We understand that you're looking for equal representation so that Stockbridge can feel that they're well represented. Um, and we will investigate that. Is that, then, I hope that's good enough. Um, we, and I'll, I'll, I'll personally ask the other three members. Uh, we won't take the action tonight because it's late. Can you hear me now? Oh, there she she's yeah. on. Yeah. I found another phone. I got on. Yay! Okay, well, I appreciate that. I would like to also ask if we could have these meetings in person again. I know the other boards are, um, and because it really it's very much a disconnect with us just sitting here, and um, I think we lose something if we can't if we can't participate. Yep. Oh, we'll investigate that. I don't know and what I, the criteria is, Jamie. Is there some and criteria? I think there's less. I think there's less libation drank also when we're not in our homes. I'm just saying. There you go. That's a point. Yeah, Jamie, that's is, a point. Is, Jamie, are there any? Um, do you have any guidelines on this, or is it up to us completely? It's totally up to you as a board. I've encouraged all the, the boards since August to consider having at least hybrid meetings. And we are having hybrid meetings in other districts within the SU. Okay. And what I mean by that is that the public can call in virtually or decide to attend. And the board shows up either virtually or in person based on how, how they feel comfort wise. And there's, and there's certain parameters, I'm sure, of how we set up the meeting in terms of where we're yep, spaced we follow out. our health checks. Uh, we've used gymnasiums and other schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we just make certain those are disinfected yeah. before the, the morning. When we, did, when we were all in person for support staff union negotiations, I was like at one room of, the, of, of one end of the room and I actually had to get up and like stick my face in the camera if I wanted to be seen and everyone else was at the other end of the room and we were masked. And there were 6 million sandwiches. So let's take this. This. Can we take this I'm, under I'm advisement? I'm really getting sick of this. this. This meeting is out of control. And I think that you guys need to figure something out to have better meetings. Because this is ridiculous. Okay. Jamie, I had a question on the hybrid meeting. Would it count to have a quorum if part of the board was on the phone? Or would they have to yep, be in person? Totally fine. Just like, just like you are now. Yep. You there are new. Well, to be to be technical, because I'm pedantic like that, there has to be one person in a public space where people can attend. Correct. So that um, we we could have we could have me sitting in in Stockbridge Central School, in and it wouldn't ever be in the same room. I could be in the library, and there could be public allowed to come into the uh, multi-purpose room, and that would count for uh, a public meeting. Can we can we take this under advisement and let's talk about it before our next meeting that we might make the next meeting. Thank you so much, meeting. Ethan. Thank you. Nope. Thank you okay. so much, Ethan. I think that's all our comments for now. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we do not go into executive session tonight. Um, uh, I'm the one who wanted it and I think it's too late and it's not the time to deal with this issue. So I would entertain Carl if you don't mind entertain a motion to adjourn are you still planning to meet on the election no, I'll, I'll entertain that, that motion on your behalf okay well, i say lindy what's your question sorry sorry are we still planning to meet the first tuesday of the month and november is election day and that might be good point thank you i just um, wanted to should we move it to the the second tuesday let's do that I think that'd be good because we'd have results of the election. Jamie and I would not be available for the second Tuesday. We have two other board meetings that night. Um. All right, let's let let just a second. I'm pulling up my calendar yeah. and do a Thursday uh, uh, Thursday of that week. Um, Megan, what about Thursday the fifth? Is that what you just said? 
That's uh, fine. Thursday is what I'm offering. Thursday, Thursday the fifth works for me. Thursday the fifth, hang on. I think I can make another meeting. A meeting work on Thursday the fifth. I will uh, message you guys tomorrow if I can. That's okay. I, can um, I assume that Keith was be um, the representative from Stockbridge until uh, whoever is duly elected um, would be sworn in, so that he would still be a representative on that Thursday. I would um, not, but that is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Okay. I Good. cannot so make Keith, the fifth. Sorry, Megan. I cannot make the fifth. I can do the fourth. I can't do the fifth. Wednesday, the fourth. How about we do this uh, by email and not tonight? Yep. I, 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 I'm happy to coordinate this. Team. Thank, Thank you, you, Jamie. Thank All you, right. Jamie. So, Carl, will you entertain a motion to adjourn, please? I don't know. I want to make us all wait around for a while. No, okay. thank you. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion has been made and seconded that we are done, so we are done. Our next regular meeting is... Uh, oh, no, the next regular meeting we do know because... It's election day, so we're going to... We'll be to be determined. Oh, yes, exactly. Thank you.